Today I want to trace this sketch that I made. It's it's for a it's a scroll saw pattern for something that would be cut out of wood and would be used to hang keys on. Little hooks would be put into into these little spots here. And I wanted to to trace that and get it ready for uh, you know to turn it into a, a, a vector so it could be resized and, and reused easily. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do just to make sure that I'm at a place where people can understand uh, how my tools are set up is I'll go up under uh, you know this uh, I just recently upgraded to I think it's the Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud 2015.3 maybe and uh, so I don't remember when this you know this little button was introduced into the the creative cloud maybe it's always been there but uh, if you don't see this it's not that important uh, you can probably figure out what I'm doing but I'll just go under this uh, this already to essentials but you can tell it to reset essentials and that will go back to its default which has your you know your tools on the left and you know your uh, your other windows on the right I will close this. These windows are little, you know, other tools. I don't really work well with just seeing the icons, so I'll usually grab this edge and start dragging uh, somehow. There we go. Dragging them out so that I can see the words. Another thing I like to do is to find, go under Window, Pathfinder and oops went onto my other screen right here uh, I've got I use Pathfinder a lot I use uh, also transform and align quite a bit so I want those to be available to me quickly so I'm gonna dock them to the right into this uh, set of tools that I that I use and uh, that's most of my my setup uh, Another thing that I do is usually under view, I will have uh, cor the corner widget, I will have it turned off. So this is how I like it. I mean, if, if I selected this, it would, it would turn it on. I use the corner widget sometimes, but I don't like to have it on all the time because it gets in my way. So uh, if yours is on and you're seeing something different, then you know, this could be, this could be the, the difference here. Another preference that I do is under selection is I like to do object selection by path only. So what that means is that if, if I've got a shape like a, a square, um, I can't select it by, by touching the middle of the square. I have to touch the edge of, the, of that path in order for it to select. So that's just something that, that I like. And I'm not really sure what the defaults are anymore because you know I just set it up this way. Um, so if, if yours seems to work differently than mine, that, that could be the difference. So uh, that's where we are. All right, so what I'm gonna do is scale this up a little bit. Um, I could zoom in, but I'm, I'm still gonna scale it up so that if I want it, to nudge things over with my arrow keys that that I can. Uh, right now what I'll do is turn on the uh, bounding box on the uh, Mac. I think it's uh, Command Shift B. And again, I think this is turned on by default. I don't like to have it on all the time. So I'll turn it on. It allows me to, uh, you know, to easily scale things. And then I'll just turn it right back off. Control Shift B, uh, and uh, and now we're back. Uh, this is going to be a little bit too dark to trace against, so I'm going to go over to transparency, and with its with this image selected, and I'll I'll you know maybe do something like you know 25%, and that knocks down the uh, the darkness and allows me to to put a, uh, a line, you know, a, a over that and easily see it. So uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep the transparency there. I also don't really want to have this move while I'm, while I'm tracing. So what I'm also going to do is do uh, 
what is command two, I think is what it is. Yeah, command two is lock. So a lot of times I use uh, the the key commands, and you should see them at the bottom of the of the screen. But I just wanted to explain. So see now, if I try to marquee that, if I try to select it, it, it won't select, which is what I want. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, and I'm going to going to start now. If you look at this, it's supposed to be symmetrical, but it really isn't. So I'm going to try and fix some of the symmetry problems as I go along. So I'm going to grab my my pen tool, and you know I'm going to I'm going to probably start right here instead of at the point, and maybe maybe I am going to confuse some people, but I'm going to click and drag here at the place that isn't seemingly the, the, the path that I want to be on. I am going to adhere to this. This is the next place that I want to put a, a point. Now, uh, when, I, when I do this, I'm choosing this particular spot because you know it's coming around this, this curve, and this is about the furthest point away uh, where we still have image. So the point of extreme on this, I'm going to click and drag down with the with the shift key pressed and that there's some there's some method in my in my madness for this uh, I'm gonna hit the command key to deselect this uh, get my I'm gonna take this this dark fill off I think that's not gonna be easy to see I'm gonna I, I just gonna drag the dark fill over to the stroke then I select the fill again and remove the fill. So now we just have a stroke. It's going to be a lot easier. So I'll grab my pen tool again, and I'm going to click and drag straight down. But I'm not going to. Go, I'm not going to uh, take it as far this time. Uh, depending on your version of Illustrator, you may or may not see this uh, this this line that follows my my pen tool. This is kind of a new thing. I don't know that, I mean, it, 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 I think it helps some people. It's not really necessary if you don't have it. You just kind of have to imagine what the line is going to look like. So I'm going to, uh, because I'm going to round this, this corner, and I don't think I can do it with, with uh, you know, with bridging from here to here. I'm going to put a point right here. Click and drag again. And then I know I want one right here, so I'm going to click and drag and then I'm going to use the option key to make this go into a corner point so that you know that it isn't going to turn into into a curved thing so I'll click and and uh, drag with the option key pressed and that then creates this corner point which allows me to come out here and kind of continue this this line I'll click and drag there and then I want to click and drag one more time before I turn this corner. And then I'll go click and drag. And I'm going to try and find a spot that's that's you know kind of close to, to where I started up there. And I'm going to click and drag this. Now you'll see that you might think, well, that's not the right spot. But I'm going to show you what my reasoning is for for doing that so I'm going to to uh, push the command key and click off of the path to stop it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this thing <clears throat> so I will take my selection tool and I'm going to reflect it I will uh, start up here push my option key while I click it and that will give me this little dialog box and I'm going to choose vertical and I'm going to copy it. So now what I what I have is a symmetrical design at least the beginnings of one. I'm going to uh, use my direct selection tool and I'm going to marquee the two points at the top here of both of these paths that I made and then I'll do Command J. 
this is all Mac specific. The, you can do all of this stuff on a PC. The, the modifier keys are just going to be a little bit different. And I haven't worked on a, on, a, on a PC for a while, so I don't remember exactly the equivalent of, say, like the, uh, the option and the, the command keys. But, but, you know, it'll be something like the alt key or the... the anyway, you'll, it, trust me, you, you can do all of this on a PC. This is not Mac specific stuff. Um, now what I'll so these two are joined. That was the command J will join these these two pieces of the path. So now I've got one path here, but these are not joined. So uh, rather than try to move manually move one over to the other, I'm going to marquee both of them, and then I'm going to do command option J, which uh, does an average first. So it's going to take those two points and it's going to uh, average them horizontally and vertically. Uh, they're both they're already on the same uh, vertical so horizontally they're going to come together. I'm going to say OK and that moves them together nicely. So now I will marquee them again and I will do command J to join. Um, those commands are, are on the they're in the menu if, if you needed to look for them. They're object, path, join, or average. That's, you know, you can see the, the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using, but that's, that's what I'm doing. All right, so now I've got this, uh, this symmetrical path, but it doesn't match up with my drawing very well. So I will select it. I'll do Control shift b to get my... Uh, my bounding box, and I'll I'll just use this to to stretch this. It's not going to match perfectly because it wasn't perfect to begin with, but I'm just going to kind of average it, or at least get it to where I think it looks pretty good, and let go. And I think that's good enough for for what I want to do. And then I will click off of that. Uh, all right. So the next thing I want to try and do is get this inside line. And that's about a quarter inch, by my estimation. So let's let's see what happens if we if we select this. I'm going to turn my uh, bounding box off. Control Shift B, and then I'm going to go up to Object, and I'm going to do Path, and I'm going to do Offset Path. So this is going to make a new path that is offset from the original path. So I'm going to Offset Path. It's, uh, let's do 0.25 inches and see what it does. We need it to be a negative so that it will move in, inside rather than outside the original path. And we'll say OK. And that's just about right. Uh, I've got some things going on that I'm going to remove. Uh, I, don't, I don't really need, so I'm just going to select this, this point and hit delete and that gets rid of those unwanted pieces and now I'm going to bridge these two here and I'll get my pen tool and I'll click and drag with with um, with my option selected or with my op option pressed and then I'm going to try to uh, gauge something in the middle for you know my my other, all right, click and drag right there, and I'm going to do command, click off, and see what I'm where I'm at. If you have a better way of doing this, you might be going, why is he doing that? Well, this is what I know. So uh, I I'm going to snap to this point up here, and uh, just so that I know that these points are are uh, even with each other, I'll drag this back down here. You'll see the reason for doing that. Now I'm going to delete this. This uh, I'm going to use my direct selection pointer to grab this uh, line. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to grab the rest of this over here and delete. So now I know that I have this. This is symmetrical now, and I'm going to copy it over. So, oh, whoops. No, I need I need to join over here first. So I will do. I'll marquee those two points. Control J. Oh, something's wrong. Let's see. 
Let me select this. Looks like I've got some pieces here and it's probably a part of a group. So, no, maybe it just has pieces to it that I didn't completely delete. Uh, see, there's a little spare point there. Sometimes things like that happen, so I'll stretch that out. There's nothing else under there. I'll do Control Z to move it back. I do snap to point so that it you'll you know it'll, it should snap right to it. And as soon as that pointer turns white, then I know that it's over the uh, the snap to point. Now I'll marquee those two. Now if I do Control J, I should get a good join. And I will do uh, select this again. I've got the whole path selected, and I'm going to mirror it. So again, I will choose Option and click. It gives me this box to make sure I'm vertical. I copy it. And now, with my direct selection tool, I will marquee those points. Control J to join. Those two, Control J to join. And now I've got my uh, symmetrical little little arch. And if I want to right now, what I can do is I can marquee both of these paths and I can do a control eight to, uh, to create what we call a compound path. It's also up here. Uh, well, I have to select it. Object, compound path, make. So control eight is the, uh, the keyboard shortcut for that. Um, and what this does is, if I do a fill, it's going to fill in this and leave this open as a as a whole. I'll show you, and then I'll just uh, do a con Control Z to back out of that. Now uh, that leaves us with the rest of this to to complete. And you know what I could have done? I, I could have tr could have tried to match exactly the you know the what was what's in the sketch but I want to fix it as I'm uh, working through it rather than taking exactly what's here I want it, it rather than try to improve it after the fact I'll just you know go with, go in with the the idea that it's going to need fix some some tweaks so I can start on the K and it doesn't really matter where I start I can start anywhere but so I will start here on this K and click and drag from that point. I'm going to drag past here so that I can because uh, eventually I'm going to weld all these things together. Um, I will do option click and I don't have to be very uh, very careful here. Option click to uh, to do a corner point and then I'll, I'll click here and then you know I'll kind of figure out where I'm at up there, click and drag, and then option, click over, and I'll get my direct selection tool. Yeah, I, I can go, I mean, you know, I can, I could be using keyboard shortcuts, you know, you can do, you can do V or A to change your, your, your uh, pointers. Um, sometimes it's, it, it's something like I, I want people to to see what I'm what I'm doing, so it might just be easier for me sometimes to go over and and uh, select them from from the toolbar. Um, I'm I know I'm inconsistent on that, but uh, I guess that's just how it's easier for me to work. Uh, I'll start here, click, click, click and drag because this has more of a curve to it. Click and drag to complete that that curve. Now I'm going to add my option click. And this has a bit of a curve into it too. So I will I'll go that. Now while this is still an active path, I can I can push the uh, the control key and I can come back in here and I can make an adjustment and once I let go I still have this this active path going. Um, that's really handy. Um, I will push option click to create my corner point, I will click and drag. To, it's got a slight bit of curve to it. And then option click. And then these look like they're pretty straight. So this is 
going to go pretty fast on the E, so we'll go straight, click, 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 click. So it's a bit of a curve, and now I'll go Option click for the corner point. Click here because I'm going to uh, I'm going to make this bottom stroke of the K. We can drag. And then option on, on this click and drag. And there is the K and the E. I will do option click to complete everything there. Um, now I'll start with the Y. And I'm just kind of, as you can see, I'm pretending like these letters go all the way. And I think that that just will help me have consistent letters rather than try to to uh, you know match these, I definitely could try to match these uh, these uh, in, inner shapes, but I feel like that it's it's easier just to um, pretend like the you know that you're drawing the letters themselves. So we'll go here. We can drag. These are option. We can drag, and I'm going to go click, click. That's pretty straight. So we'll go click. And then I'll click and drag to get me a Bezier handle there. And uh, again, option to to make a corner point there. Go right here, click and drag to give me an arc for this. Click and drag for this arc. I'm going to go past here. Again, I don't want to have that interfere because that is not something I care about. You know, this is my new line. Uh, now we'll finish the S. I'm not going to try and make this curve, so I'll just quickly click, click over to here. I'm going to start, because this is curve, I'm going to start with a click and drag. Whoops, I didn't put my my option. Click. Whoop. All right. Click. <laughs> All right, now my option key, and uh, pull my control handle out. Now, again, when I'm going to do a uh, something that is curved, I always want to try to put the 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 point at what I would call the point of extreme. So, I mean, if I were going to put a, a vertical ruler up against here, where would it hit this this arc? And I think it would hit right about here. So I'm going to click and drag right there on the S. And this control handle is a little bit uh, long in order for me to create a good uh, point here. So I'm going to, while my, while my path is still active, I'm going to push the control key and I'm going to shorten it a little bit. And then that will give me better control when I click here because, again, like my point of extreme here, if I put a ruler uh, horizontally, where would it touch this this arc? And I think it would touch right about there. And I'll click and drag that. And then I'll finish up doing this corner point. And then I'll use my option key to click. And then I'll do a straight click. Cl clicking here. And then this is kind of tricky, so I'll maybe I will start a, a curved point right there, and then you know this would be my point of extreme. If you imagine this this arc of the S be right about there where a vertical line would touch, so I'll click and drag there. Looks like I need to adjust this, so I'm going to push my my command key, and I'll make this adjustment while my path is still active, and then. Uh, I'm going to actually see if I can get this, instead of putting it, uh, a point here, I'm going to move all the way down here and see if I can get this thing to flex right. So I will click and drag. I'll do my command key to edit this just a little bit. That looks pretty good. This this uh, handle is way too long. It's, gonna, it's going to cause this uh, this curve to to be way out of bounds, so I'm going to use my my command key to grab this and move it back. 
like I want it to be not even with where my next point is going to be. I want it to be back a ways. And so my next point is going to be at the at the very bottom of this arc. Click and drag that. And then I'll click and drag to, to finish it. It's still not quite right, but uh, I'll, I'll finish this off. So I'll use my option key to create my corner point. I'll use my option key to finish that. And then I will get my direct selection and tweak this just a little bit more. So I'm going to move that. And that looks pretty good. I just moved the, moved the point to the right a little bit. So I'm pretty pleased with how this is going. I'll start at the top of this heart. Click and drag. Again, you know, the top of the heart, as in my, as I'm imagining it, would be about right there. Um, if you look at these at these handles, you you want to look for. I mean, ideally, this would be about a third of the distance. I know that's not exactly, but this handle would take about a third of the distance. A third of the distance would just be the arc. And the other third would be, you know, the the other handle. So that's if you're looking for a goal of like how long should these handles be in relation to the others, that's a good rule of thumb is to is to keep a third with one handle, a third is the arc, and a third is the other handle. We'll see if I can uh, be consistent with that. It's not absolutely requ a requirement to be perfect thirds, but uh, that's kind of the the ideal. So that looks pretty good. And you know we're we're roughly that. Um, I'll come down here. This is probably going to need a little bit of of adjustment. So uh, the control handle on the left is a little bit short, which is why, even though I've got a, th a third of the distance covered with this one, that this is is not quite right. So I'll use my command key to reach over here and pull this one a little longer and see how that's about a third, about a third, about a third of this whole uh, arc segment. So uh, if you if you can get used to thinking in that way, you're going to have a lot more luck getting the, the paths that you want. I'll use option to make this corner point and we'll move that about like that. And then this is probably the point of extreme here. So click and drag that. Not too bad. Um, this one. And option to finish this one. Again, you know, that's what, what you're looking for is smooth, smooth curves. If it if it looks bumpy, then then something isn't quite right. I'll uh, I'll start here and continue with. So you know that's probably a little. Give my command key to shorten this one up just a bit. That looks better. This is probably going to need to come down some. So maybe like that. If you want to anticipate, uh, maybe it's too. Maybe the. Because this one is so shallow, we'll, we'll move this one back. And then we'll use option to come out of there with a click and drag. Click this here. And again, this one is way too long. It shouldn't overshoot the, uh, the top of this arc. So we'll pull that way back with the, with the uh, command key pressed. And then See how nicely that starts to transition if you if you're thinking third third third, um, and you know I I guess what I could do is start anticipating. It's it's hard to anticipate everything, but you know maybe that's about maybe a third, and then finish up with the option key, like that, and that looks pretty good. So uh, now to to finish this piece up. I, with my direct, direct selection, I can grab the heart by itself, and I could do, you know, compound path make. So now this is a solid piece, and the the arc background is a solid piece. Um, and with the pathfinder, uh, you you can find pathfinder up here as well if you if you lose it. But 
uh, under your windows. But if I do Pathfinder, I'm going to use this this uh, option here to join these shapes to fuse them together. So I'll marquee the two paths for the K and the E, and I'll do this, and you can see that they're that they're joining. I'll do the Y and the S, and I'll join those. And you might say, well, why don't you just grab the whole thing and fuse it together? You can do that. I, I just sometimes like to do it in steps so that if something happens, I can I can easily back out that, that one uh, step and, and figure it out rather than if I try to do the whole thing, I don't really know where the problem is. So if I do it piece by piece, it's easier for me to isolate it. Um, let's grab the heart and the arc and join those that looks pretty good and now you know we can try and join this in with the k and the e now the y and the s would be the last pieces and that is looking pretty good uh, i'm going to grab an ellipse to make a circle and this is just to mark where that where the so these are, these represent hooks. So really, it would be a, a screw-in hook that that you know a, a key would hang on, and I'm going to represent those with with little circles. So I will start. I don't really have to worry about being perfectly accurate uh, at first. So with this circle here, I'm going to use the Option key on the Mac uh, to click and drag this over to the the next and this is good when I let go this is going to make a copy so if I use the option key and drag something it's going to make a perfect duplicate and the other thing I can do is I can hit control D to uh, to, to keep that going so it's duplicate and uh, hit control D again to duplicate it duplicate it duplicate it now you know the distance between here and here is not the same so what I can do if I could either grab this whole thing and move it over as a group, or if I want to spread these out, I can just uh, take this one and make make the adjustment of of the the distance here. Now I can grab all of these in a marquee, and I can use a line and my distribute. I can do. Uh, That will distribute them all, you know, I don't know why I'm having a hard time. It's going to give them an even distance so that they're distributed equally. So that keeps us from having to do it by eye. Now, the other thing that I can do now, if I want it to be perfectly centered with the rest of this, is I can do Control g to group them. Uh, this is a compound path, so it's already grouped, and I can, uh, I can use the align again. So I'll grab this. And I'll grab this whole thing. And with the alignment, I need to show my options. And this is going to tell me what it's going to align to. If I do align to selection, then it's going to align this to this. If I do align, say, to artboard, then it will align to the, you know, to the white space of my artboard. But align to selection works for me. And I will choose to center those pieces. And it looks like they're pretty much already centered. So uh, I can now get rid of, I can do uh, unlock all, which is going to unlock my, my background to trace. I can select that, and I'll just delete it. And there is my, my finished vector. And I can also include these circles if I want to in the, uh, the compound path so that when I choose to make it all one color, and I'll take and get rid of the uh, the stroke. Let's see if the circles are there. They are not there. All right. This this is uh, a good chance to talk about something. Uh, if if the the direction that these things are drawn, uh, each path has a direction. And if they're if they're uh, opposing each other, hold on. Let's see. If I might still be wrong here. If they are opposing each other then or if they're they're not in sync then you won't have things show as uh, like like a the hole of a donut so there's something wrong with this 
Uh, let's see. Suddenly, it is attributes. I need my attributes. Nope, it's not attributes. It is appearance. Ugh. I'm nervous and uh, did they move it on me with it's not info. It is attributes. I was just seeing the wrong thing. So I was seeing, uh, I, I had to, I had to expand it out to show the options. So with attributes, sorry, that took so long. Uh, with attributes, I select this. And if I, th this is telling what my path direction is. So it's showing you a, a little path up there and an arrow and if I click on this, it's going to change the direction of the path. And suddenly, that thing appears. And you're going to run into this, so this is a useful, a useful thing to know. And uh, I should put this into my, my tools there. And uh, we'll do with, with the next one. And I don't know if it'll let me select all of them and change the path. I think it will. There we go. Now we're now we're in good, and uh, there we go. The, the the finished piece, and I think that's it. This can now be, you know, like if you were going to do a scroll saw uh, cutout, you know, you you might. Uh, print this out and you could either manually trace it. There are ways, like if you did a reversal, you could use something like like acetone to uh, or uh, xylene or something to to transfer this this like a uh, it would have to be a laser print, but you know transfer a laser print, uh, you invert the laser print and uh, the, something like xylene or acetone should should make the uh, the toner transfer to the wood and then you can uh, you can cut it out. So uh, this is nice because you know, if we do our bounding box, you know, we can make it any size now that, that we want instead of, of having that, that bigger or that kind of rough sketch. So this uh, concludes this uh, tutorial on how to use the pen tool to, to trace a sketch. Thank you.